do, which we have, obviously. Uh, stand facing towards the midline of the room, this way, this way, and stand about the length of your foot from the end of the mat. Uh, obviously, Zoom is at home. You don't have to face the midline of your rooms. <laughs> we point this. It's just, that would just be some weird power control. <laughs> Bring your hands to your heart. That's the namaskara part. Breathe through your nose if you can. It can be useful to move your feet, particularly spreading the toes and lifting the feet and relanding them, just to begin to get some hydration going on through the plantar fascia. And that's the fascia on the soles of the feet. And uh, obviously I've mentioned it many times before, but when you move any part of the body, it increases the hydration levels in that part of the body <clears throat> because of the pressure and then the release of the pressure. Plus adhesions, which form uh, during stasis, adhesions begin to melt away. Both of these factors mean that we resume a sense of flow, not just in the body, in the blood, in the lymph, a, a sense of flow through the nerves, but of course in the mind, because when there is a body and a mind coexisting, they are one. Raise your arms up and tone your tummy up so that when you <coughs> raise your arms up, your tummy is toned and lifted. It's all right. Tummy is toned and lifted and the pelvic floor is lifted too. And that little nudge on the pelvic floor nudges energy into the central channel, which means we're centered, <laughs> which means our actions are non-biased, which means they're non-cardamic, which is the point of the whole uh, caboodle. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, fold and touch the floor. So that probably means bending your knees, but it might not. But we don't want the back to feel dull, aching or painful over any sustained amount of time. So if it feels any of those, dull, aching or painful, then either if your legs are straight, you've got to move your feet, move your legs in ways that begin to massage the hamstrings so that the pelvis can release, or straightforward bend the knees. Now we're going to step one foot back. Let's say the foot that's uh, furthest away from me, stepping it back towards the back of the mat <laughs> and then bring your knee down towards the floor. Take the knee behind the pelvis, breathe through your nose if you can. It's a good stretch in the morning to take the knee back like this. Some people might want to come a little higher onto the fingertips or even up onto the leg. Keep the breath flowing through the nose. Focus on the stretch from the inner groin. This is a stretch of the iliacus and the psoas muscles. The stretch in the inner groin. And then follow, if you want, with the arms. So that's optional, following with the arms. Light tone in the tum. I always want to say tra-la-la-la-la after that. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, you know why, because it got the same rhythm as Brown Girl in the Ring by... Um, who were they? Who were they? Boney M, thank you very much. And then coming down again, lift your back knee, step into downward facing dog, breathe through your nose. <laughs> it's not often you hear about Boney M this time of the morning, is it? <laughs> Jaw soft, eyes soft. And looking to stretch and open the armpits, especially the inner armpit, but also the outer armpit as well at the same time. Jaw soft, eyes soft, throat soft. Bringing yourself forwards so your shoulders come above your wrists. Now, if there's any problem with the wrists, actually this kind of pressure can be very, very beneficial. Although you could do this on your forearms if you needed to. You're going to come to the notorious Chaturanga Dandasana, hated by many for good reason. From there to Udva Mukhashvanasana, head up, dog position. Light tone in the tummy, finding the pelvic floor. Back to down face dog. Morning, Ollie. I'm glad you bought the red shorts. <laughs> Breathing through your nose. Jaw soft, armpits open. Get your feet back from whence they came. So that could be a jump, a step, or uh, a bus if there's one coming. And take deep breaths. Don't forget that's from my Jim Taron seven books, seven jokes, not, not seven books, seven jokes in one book. 
a book coming out in a, in a bookstore near, near you. Breathe through your nose, jaw soft, thighs soft. Let's step the other foot back towards the back of the mat similarly. And spend a bit of time stretching and playing with the stretch. So the knee moves backwards and forwards, up and down. Enjoying, just offering that out in case you fancy enjoying. And the knee landing behind the pelvis, not too heavy on the knee. The toes can be tucked under or not, as you like. Climbing up onto the leg is an option. And then the focus is on the inner groin, the iliacus and the psoas. Uh, so top of the inner thigh, can you feel? Top of the inner thigh, cross your pubis as a stretch. You can feel that. And then you breathe into that. And that stretch is a muscle that goes underneath the abdominals after that and attaches to the sides of your lower spine. So stretch those uh, the upper ends as well by extending your arms. And see if you can imagine and feel and breathe that muscle, the psoas. Imagine and feel and breathe. Very good indeed. Coming down, lifting, taking your foot back and back into downward facing dog. Calmness, conditions, connection. That's the three C's of yoga. So take deep breaths. Play with it if you find it useful, you know, just to kind of limber your body up a little bit. Bending, extending, moving left, moving right. Shoulders come forwards. Again, I remind you that if there is a problem with the wrists, <laughs> this oftentimes is useful, even if sometimes it's painful. But if it's just too painful, you could do that pose on your forearms. Similarly with Chaturanga Dandasana, through to Udva Mukha, Shwanasana, that's the head up dog position. With tone reiterated through the tummy, this is a moment to moment awareness. Adhomokha Shwanasana, downward facing dog. Draw some deep breaths to you and through you. And then find your way back to your feet. This could be a, a jump, a walk, a step, rollerblading. I, you know, find your own way. Breathe through your nose if you can. Bend your ankles, knees, and hips. <laughs> Give your back a stretch. So that might mean bending the knees and moving back and forth or bouncing or moving your pelvis side to side. But it's all about the breath. And then raise your arms up uh, like you're skiing. And I think for me anyway, I, I still like to create some movement. It's not that I like to create the movement. Actually, I'm not really anything to do with it. The flow asks it of me. Arms forwards and standing up. Big circle through to the heart with the hands. Catch five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten deep breaths. Jaw soft, eyes soft. And again, I find myself moving my feet. I'm not saying that there's, you know, uh, one way only, but I'm pretty sure that movement has served several purposes. One is the hydration of the fascia, the melting of adhesions in the fascia. And two is the usurping of habit patterns that might otherwise uh, creep their way in. Huh? Raise the arms again, light tone in that tummy, breathing into it your own way. So in, there's really investigative, explorative, a beautifully sensual, super powerfully sensual, like sensual as in uh, surrendered to the power of the senses so that they uh, overwhelm <clears throat> our stories that we overlay and sometimes see through. <clears throat> so the power of the senses, inhale, exhale, down to the floor, probably bending the knees, depends on the length of your legs. <clears throat> if the legs are straight and you must be, we must be disciplined about this, we cannot uh, tolerate any sustained dullness, aching or pain. So. With straight legs, that means moving your feet uh, or, you know, moving the heels with, or bending the legs. So even if there's a bit of dullness somewhere in the back, that's okay if it's there for a moment, but 
you should be showing signs that what you're doing is beginning to release it. That's very, very important indeed. When you're ready, let's step the foot that's furthest away from me back towards the back of the mat. <clears throat> Landing the knee down behind the pelvis. Again, you can lift and land as many times as you uh, find useful. It's useful for the stretch. It's useful for the placement of the bursa, and that is the fluid sacs in the knees. Climb up on your front leg. If you want, if it's painful on the knee, you need to come down and just adjust the knee position. That can make a difference. And then focus on the upward release through the breath, which is psychophysical and followed through with the arms. Psychophysical, followed through with the arms. Keep the jaw passive, light tone in the tummy. Good. Coming back down, lifting the back knee, taking the front foot back, and you're back in your meditative moment to moment Adhumukha Shvanasana. So it's meditative, it's moment to moment. Sometimes taking the feet a little wider can make the pelvis feel like it's got more space. Padding your paws into a deeper weave with the yoga mat is very, very helpful. Opening up your armpits so they're stretching inner and outer. Coming forwards to Kumbhakasana. So that means shoulders above the uh, wrists. Again, if it's tough uh, on the wrists, can be very beneficial, even if it's painful initially. Coming down to Chaturanga Dandasana. Only for a moment because we don't like it. And then after Uttva Mukha Svanasana, light tone in the tummy, his hose can be tucked under or pointing back. It's up to you, but the legs are off the floor. That's one of the defining points of Uttva Mukha Svanasana. Back up. When you're ready. Stepping, jumping, walking, staggering, hitchhiking. But looking after your back with TLC. So we, you know, just as the band TLC don't want no scrubs, we don't want any dullness, aching or pain in our, in our backs. So loosen, loosen, loosen. And that oftentimes means bending uh, the legs, of course. Stepping the other foot back when you're ready. Take a breath or two. Play with it. This is all about tuning in, tuning in to this living moment, which is not a concept and it's not something in the future. It's always this living moment, isn't it? So tuning in, tuning in, tuning in. Like it's love. The tuning in is love. The knee goes behind the pelvis onto the floor. Hopefully you've struck a good position, but you can always change it if you need to and you climb up <coughs> onto your leg. Breathing through the nose, focusing on not just the stretch, but the giving, giving to the stretch of the psoas, which is psychophysical. You can observe that directly. And once that release happens, it expresses through the arms, expresses through the arms, root to the neck are soft, the eyes are soft. Breathing deep. This, of course, is Anjaneyasana. This is one of the names of uh, Hanuman. Hanuman's always been a favorite uh, of mine, if you're allowed favorites. Well, you are. It's called Ishta Devata, your favorite god. <laughs> okay, coming down. Lift your back knee, front foot back. Breathing easy, jaw soft. Really padding uh, the pores, your hands into the mat. The first time I ever came across Hanuman was in... South Asia was in India on a postcard in a shop and there was Hanuman uh, ripping open his chest in a rather gory way I have to say and inside his chest was sitting rather happily a Rama and Sita which uh, you know I was really struck by the um, imagery <laughs> obviously it's quite potent 
But there was something about that sort of, you know, in, you're in my heart, very graphically demonstrated. It was very, very beautiful. We're going to step, walk, jump, stagger, whatever gets you there. Uh, and then make sure those three um, grunties, those three problems in the back are not sustained. So they're showing signs of at least dullness, aching and pain. Bend ankles, knees and hips. Arms behind you in a sort of skiing-ish modality. And then arms forwards and up. And look for flow. Look for the intimacy of the moment. And stand up. Take a big wide circle, hands to namaskara. Breathe through your nose if you can. Breathe through your nose. Jaw soft, eyes soft. Taking a brick block, if you have one, or a regular block otherwise, over to the right side of your mat <coughs> and stepping to the left side of your mat with your left foot. So the block on the right side, left foot on the left. Now I've put mine down on its lowest setting. You should just reiterate there are three height choices. One, two, three. And there's a directional choice that makes four choices. And there's a choice not to have a brick at all. That's five choices. That is my favorite. Well, actually at home I do no block, but that's out of block usage, that's my favorite. But you might want it higher. So if you're not sure, start with it higher and see where you, you know, see where you go. <laughs> Left toes in, right foot and leg out on the ball of the foot. Finish off the turn in the heel. Check you've got heel to arch alignment. If you've got heel to heel alignment, just feel how much you're loved and then change it. <laughs> okay, stretch your arms. Inhale, exhale, that's really good, exhale. Okay, here comes a hamstring stretch. Breathe through your nose, really good. A parigraha, uh, empty of grasping. It doesn't mean that our experience is empty of grasping, but we don't attach to grasping. Arm down, bend your knee, walk your back foot towards your front foot without turning your toes in. There's your block. It should be about the length of the block ahead. You've got the different height options. I've gone for option four. And then you raise your top leg up. Brilliant. Well, I wasn't expecting that. What fine form you're on this morning. Very impressed. Very impressed. <laughs> Breathe through your nose. You can walk your top hand, your top fingers along your leg. It will lengthen your bottom ribs and stop you side flexing the trunk. And that's much more better, as we say in proper English grammar. And then some, most won't, but some will want to bend the leg and hold. That's another option. It's called Japasana. Okay, well, well done. I think I pushed my luck a bit. Bend, bend your knee, go back to where you came from on the back of the mat. Inhale. Sorry, that sounded like a quiz show. Walk your feet towards each other. Oh, good morning. Walk your feet towards each other. And let's dribble. Welcome, everyone. There you are. There you are. It's like you've had your coffee now. Let's dribble the block to side two. What an impressive class we have. <clears throat> I wish you could see them, Zoomers. These rumors are incredible today. They're really on good form. <clears throat> All right, you're on good form too, Zoomers. Such a lot of rivalry between the Zoomers and Rumors. Let's turn the back toes in and front foot and leg out. Heel to arch alignment, which we check with glee. <laughs> and then raise the arms when you're ready. So perhaps you can feel your ribs lifted. As in light, if there's light tone on the tummy, there'll be a lovely stretch in your back, which I, I think is something to enjoy. Do check that your back toes have turned in. Well done, Bryony. Inhale, exhale, <laughs> coming down. Yourself, thyself. So study is a form of relaxation. For a yogi, study is a form of relaxation. So we're not studying to get something, to gain something, to grasp something, to attain something. We're studying because <clears throat> it conditions direct knowing here and now. 
So we see Sanditi called Dharma. It's apparent here now. Akali called Dharma. Uh, you know, irrespective of time, whatever, you know, whatever the past, future, present. Arm down, bend your front knee. Walk your back foot in. Try not to turn the toes in as you walk forwards. The block should be about the length of the block ahead. Uh, calmness, conditions, connection. This, of course, is Ada Chandrasana. Breathe through your nose if you can. Walk your fingers along your top leg if you can. Again, there's the option for some to take chapasana, which uh, chapa means sugar cane. It's because it intimates a sugar cane bow, which many deities do hold a sugar cane bow, including Tara and Tripura, Tripura Sundari, and at times also Shiva, and of course the god Karma. Okay, calmly coming back. <laughs> Stylishly, let's go for stylishly coming back. Back to Trico and Asana. Whatever happened, you know, if you had any mishaps on the way, just do the cat thing when they've had a little slip and go back to calmness like nothing ever happened. Inhale, come on up. Well done. Hands on the hips, <laughs> take a, a deep breath or two. Walk your feet towards each other. Take your brick and dribble it. Really take some deep breaths. Now we're going to place the block at the back of our mat. That's the side furthest away from me. And we're going to place our foot in front of it. Now I've just positioned my block so there's enough room for my foot to turn and not come off the end of the mat. So the edge of the block and the edge of your foot are flush to each other. And there's room for you to turn your foot and not come off the end of the mat too. Hands on the hips. Breathe through your nose. Turn your back toes in. See if you can stretch your little toe on the back foot. Lift the heel. Turn mostly on the ball of the foot, and this is the front foot. Finish off the turn on the heel. Heel to arch alignment. If you turn only on the heel, you'll end up with heel to heel alignment, which we don't want. Stretch into the back leg and the front leg with love and breath. As you begin to come down and forward, reaching for your block. Good job. You can have it higher if you find that useful. Often is useful. And then stretching up. Lift the back heel and stretch your top arm. Lifting the back heel will give you more space to stretch the top arm. And then stretch the back heel back down, but keep that spaciousness in the top arm. Breathe if you can through your nose. Soften your jaw. See if you can spread the toes on the back foot. See if that can be a mirror of a calmness. Super plus duper makes super duper. Let's come on, let's come on up on the inhalation. Turn the feet to the front. Take two or three or four deep breaths. So these liminal uh, places are very, very important in yoga. The in-between, between one side and the other side of a pose. It's good to catch the pause. Catch the pause. <laughs> Back toes in, front foot and leg out. Bloody, bloody, blah. Uh, block down. Bloody, bloody, blah stood for block down. Check the alignment, heel to arch. Hope that, that you've uh, nailed that. <clears throat> and then stretching into the back leg as you extend through the tissues of the front leg, molecule by molecule, tilting the pelvis, leaning down, breathing calmly. And then whatever height, sometimes it's better to have more height, raise the top arm, raise the back heel, and stretch further. Of course, there's times in our lives when we can't stretch the arm over. That's... Totally fine. The great thing is 
In this pose, you don't have to. Other options include hand on the hip or even arm around and holding the inner thigh. It's delicious, actually. Breathing through your nose if you can. Meditation means uh, intimacy right now. Arm down, palm down. Inhale, come up. Breathe through your nose, jaw soft. Take two, three, four or more deep breaths as you walk your feet towards each other. We're going to move said block again. I'm presuming, uh, Zoomers, you've got some sort of block. <laughs> if you haven't got one of these brick blocks, the other kind of blocks work okay. And it's, it's kind of worth getting a brick block. They are pretty useful for lots of things. <clears throat> but the other blocks are okay. Placing the block so it's uh, over the uh, side of the mat, and then you're going to place one foot on the block. They fit, I would say, up to a size 11 and a half shoe because your toes don't have to be on it. <clears throat> but um, if your foot's any bigger than that, you might need to use another block uh, as well. You step your other foot back, you must make sure you've got enough width across the mat. <clears throat> so heel to heel is absolute bare minimum but we should actually be uh, usually a little wider than that, but not wider than hip width. Raise the arms up when you're ready. Breathe through the nose if you can. Bend your front knee and feel the stretch in the inner groin of the back leg, just as we did at the beginning of the class in Anjane Asana. <clears throat> I find it useful to play with the back heel, to lift and land, to experiment with the stretch in multifarious ways. The jaw is soft. So every time you play, remember you might melt some adhesions. <clears throat> some habit patterns get usurped. So we begin to step out of karmic existence, which is the whole point of practice. Karmic existence uh, implies the existence of uh, action and reaction, conditioning our perception, conditioning further uh, action. <sighs> Inhaling calmly with the pelvic floor in your awareness, arms down. <clears throat> Walk your back foot towards your front foot very calmly and just move that block across the mat. Of course, this pose is Vira Bhadra. Vira means hero, Bhadra means lots of things, including good, good hero, good warrior. <clears throat> Stepping the other foot back. <clears throat> and then we add asana, uh, because uh, that's semantically drifted in some texts to mean posture. Arms raised when you're ready. Remember that up to hip width, not beyond. <clears throat> and no narrower than heel to heel, but probably wider than that. Inhale, raise up, exhale, bend your knee. Eyes soft, jaw soft. <clears throat> Excuse me. Focus on the stretch in the groin. Breathe through your nose if you can. Reiterative movements. So uh, from the back foot, four. Uh, the back groin, the iterative movements from the back foot for the back groin. <clears throat> and in this way, not only do we stretch the psoas and help it to come round and help the back, we also listen and respond to what's needed elsewhere. For example, you can look after with love the, the knee, make sure that that gets what it needs in the present moment, from the back leg, I mean. Inhale, <clears throat> pelvic floor in your awareness, come on up. Walk the back foot to the front foot, put the block to one side, lay down on your back. Feet face into the midline of the room. Oh yeah. <laughs> lay down on the back. <clears throat> Don't mind if I do. Gosh, you guys move quickly then. <laughs> Bend your legs, feet on the floor, take some deep breaths. <clears throat> So just taking a few deep breaths, observing the naturalness, the spontaneity of the breath, the selflessness of it.
<clears throat> so it's in a very strong argument for a dynamic, strong a body work. <clears throat> because you have to use a thorn to remove a thorn. <clears throat> in other words, the habit patterns are so strong that we have to offer a challenge equally strong that just knocks that, those habit patterns off their rails. And to be derailed, to be trackless, <clears throat> is to be centered. Um, raise up one leg. It doesn't matter which one. That one's a good choice. Yeah, I would have chosen that one. Dorsey plantar flex, circle, half circle, scrunch, unscrunch, toes. Mix up those, <clears throat> excuse me, mix up those movements <clears throat> in any way that's effective for you. And that can include bending, extending, shaking the leg. You know, it's just about limberness, easefulness and limberness. And then we're going to turn the heel in and the toes out and go ahead and cross that leg over the other one. The foot that's on the floor comes off the floor. <clears throat> There's an inverted triangle. If you lift your head, you'll see it. Plunge through it, interlace around your far shin. <clears throat> and have a little bit of movement. So you can hold the far shin or back thigh if it's hard to reach the shin, or you can use a belt <clears throat> around the leg if it's hard to reach either. And don't hold the breath like that. Let's, let's let our breath release, yes. Let's let our breaths release. And see if we can find some sensations that are... Uh, Beyond, that take us <clears throat> beyond. <clears throat> so beyond <clears throat> speech is the pre-construction of speech in the mind. Beyond the pre-construction of speech in the mind is the sort of vision, uh, the pashanti it's called uh, the sort of seeing and beyond that is paramvak uh, which is this sort of uh, speechless uh, before pure potential uh, it's sort of synonymous if you were into Shaivism with Shiva uh, if you were into Buddhism uh, with the Buddha mind or the blue sky mind or with the beginner's mind if you're into uh, Jainism uh, with the sound that emanated from Mahavira that only his 12 close disciples could understand it was just a sort of resonant sound and they understood that as teachings that they wrote down but Mahavira apparently wasn't saying words but just emanating this sort of vibration quite cool Okay, release and place your feet back down onto the floor. Now, that's only in the Digambara uh, school of Jainism that they think that. Just in case you were worried, <laughs> take a few deep breaths. Uh, Jainism splits into two main schools. There's lots of schools, but the two main schools are the Digambaras and the Shvetambaras. And the Digambaras, Shveta means white in Sanskrit, Shveta. And uh, so they wear white. And the Digambaras, Diga means space or the sky, so they wear nothing. They wear the sky. Then the nudists. <laughs> when you're ready, raise up the other leg and go through a similar process. Um, Dorsey plantar flexion, shaking, scrunching, unscrunching, etc. Rotating. So just getting, bringing life into the leg uh, and interest you know really make it interesting and sort of <clears throat> difficult to to uh, avoid as it were and and useful you know like liberating for any stuckness in the body mind heel in toes out <clears throat> cross that leg over the other one 
<clears throat> lift the foot that's on the floor, off the floor, lift your head, there's the inverted triangle <clears throat> that represents uh, sh a Shakti, uh, the goddess power. And then rolling left and right, uh, looking for you know, that which can't be expressed with Vaikari uh, speech, talking like I'm doing now. <clears throat> Even <clears throat> before the Madhya level of speech, the middle level where you're sort of preparing, constructing what you're going to say in your, in your mind before you say it out uh, through your mouth. Even before the Prashanti, the, the initial vision that then tries to formulate itself in the mind before it expresses in words. <clears throat> to this Param, this uh, beyond Parambak, beyond speech. Which is the field of pure potential because it's not clinging to anything, has no karmic bias. And so, therefore, it's available, <clears throat> fully available to respond appropriately, uh, dynamically, uh, to exactly how. <laughs> Things are instead of through the veil of multiple uh, biases that we usually overlay, <clears throat> blinding us uh, to reality as it is. You don't have to be a clever person to see reality as it is. You just need to not have uh, obscurations. <laughs> <Okay. clears throat> when you're ready, uh, release. <clears throat> place the feet on the floor, pop, pop your hands underneath your head, fingers interlaced like you're on holiday. And there's a certain air of excitement this morning at the uh, early class here as people have come in from uh, the much lighter, it's almost like a holiday vibe. Apparently it was a beautiful shot of red in the sky. I missed that. but <clears throat> So there's a little excitement. There's a little tiny bit of spring in the air which we like very much lift up <clears throat> the feet so the lower back is kissing the ground breathe through your nose years ago i i would say it was 1991 i went for my first time to chithurst monastery and they had a little publication there. And they always have these free books there. <clears throat> and it's called Roots and Branches. And that really struck a note with me, Roots and Branches. Because that's what our experience is like. It's Roots and Branches. We need to be aware of the whole of it. Branches are the bits that are expressed. <clears throat> the roots are the bits that are sort of unconscious. You could call them the sort of habit pattern, the field, the, the blueprint, if you like. <clears throat> so to be aware is to be aware of the whole roots and branches at the same time. Hmm? <clears throat> Last time I was in Stanmore Park, it struck me the only way to really know a tree is to simultaneously feel its roots and branches. And then it blows your mind. You've never tried uh, to go to a, a woodland near you. And just open to the roots and branches. <clears throat> Lift your head when you're ready. And there's an impression made into the deep belly. You just feel that impression. <clears throat> that impression <clears throat> invites what the body is holding to release. It's an invitation, it's not, not a demand. And that release, the acceptance of the invitation comes through the breath. <clears throat> the toes come down towards the floor slowly, keeping the lower back very close to the floor until you touch the floor with toes only. Toes only. Keep the lower back very close to the floor. Good. Now float the legs back up, float them. So they sort of drift 
I like the word drift. It's a nice word. Drifting. Once the legs have drifted to their full extent, to their full flexion at the hip, extend one leg to 45 degrees and keep the lower back even more intimate with the floor. <clears throat> Feel free to move your foot if you want. Then take the bent knee and the opposite elbow towards each other. Put no strain on the neck. The hands can slip and slide around the neck. And then <clears throat> contract and repeat on the other side, extending to 45 and turning. Return to center, head down, feet down. Let's take a deep breath with a sigh for the exhale. <sighs> take a few of those, just like you're resting in the goddess. <laughs> Resting in the goddess, and that means you're returning to the goddess. Everything that has always been hers, body, brain, breath, thoughts, ideas, expectations, worries, views, opinions. Many of the things that we like, you know, we might think, well, that's not much of a thing to give to the goddess. I give my worries, you know, but she loves it. <laughs> Don't forget one of the instantiations of the goddess is Kali, and one of her attributes is her enormous mouth <laughs> that can eat anything, right? And, you know, everything is food. <laughs> so that's really cool. Obviously, that's partly in reference to her as time. Now, release your head back to the floor. Lift up your legs when you're ready. Reach through the inside of your legs and hold your big toes. And then head can come back <clears throat> down. Of course, you can have a head support for these poses that if you feel... Your neck is tight. It's very good to have head support. So uh, holding your big toes with head support or without, it's up to you. And then play with the sensation side. So you might wiggle the bum, or you might move to roll a bit to one side or the other. Yoga is easy because you only need three things. You only need to remember three things. Leela Arta Lakshana. Play. Leela. For the purpose of absorption. Arta means purpose. And look for signs confirming that absorption. That's Lakshana, signs, indicators. Like the breath being more expressive. Like feeling absorbed. Like doubt being replaced entirely by spontaneity. These are signs of absorption. Uh, obvious when you consider that what we're absorbed into is the interdependent also known as the goddess. Okay, slow and easy release if you're ready, when you're ready. Feet come back to the floor. Take a deep breath or two. I quite like placing the hands on the upper chest. So right at the top, where the chest sort of moves towards the collarbones, into the collarbone area. And I, I don't know about you, but I find that's more comfortable if I adjust my elbows to adjust my uh, shoulder blades. I can make that more comfortable. And then it invites a sense of breathing up into the hands. It's not that, you know, um, really uh, we're not involved in our yoga practice and that's how it should be. We shouldn't be involved in it. And what I mean by we is our sort of ideas and um, habit patterns because those are karmic. Those are karmic. Okay, lift up your legs and give them what they deserve. You're right. It's a hug. And roll around. They deserve a hug because they either walked you to the Buddhist center or they at least walked you to your iPad, iPhone or other smart device so that you could join the class. And rolling and looking for sensations that are 
that take you back through the layers of speech from Baikari speech, well, that is the normal spoken language, to the Madhya lay layer, the middle layer between the initial spark, the Prashanti, from the root Pash, which means to see, so the original vision that we then formulate before we speak. But before that, the emptiness in which we take our refuge. <laughs> the emptiness in which we take our refuge. Mm. When you're ready, return to center, land the legs, roll over easy onto your side, facing and towards the shrine side of the room. Extend your bottom arm and really stretch, really stretch. And then a bit of a roll forwards and backwards. And sometimes you're very lucky, we're very lucky because we get a sensation that's um, powerful enough just to sort of nudge us off our tracks, you know, <laughs> which is really nice, really useful, because we can be really sort of going along our way, along our tracks. And actually, you know, a good friend would be the person who just walked past and just <laughs> gave you a little elbow. And then you're like, whoa, where am I? Trackless. So the trackless is the empty mind, the open mind, you could call it. I suppose it's better to call it open mind because empty mind can, can be a confusing, confusing metaphor. But empty just means uh, that it's not clinging onto any particular bias. So it's fully available to, to see things as they are rather than you know, through any kind of um, conditioning. Even good conditioning, you know, blinds us. Even thinking, you know, all people are lovely. If you think all people are lovely, it's nice, you know. But that, that can be a blinding. Better to let people appear as they are. And, and not label them, even after an event, you know. Maybe such and such a person was cross, and there's no point in labeling them as a cross person. That was just that moment. Okay, knees up when you're ready. Hope you had a good roll. Come on up from the side. Back down you go. Similarly. That's a word you have to rehearse, I find, similarly, as is meditative. Too many, too many phonemes. <laughs> too many T's. I'm surprised those words haven't dropped out of usage by now. Anyway, extend bottom ribs and roll uh, for the bliss of derailment. Because when you're derailed, you're, you're not, you know, you're nothing in the best. You know, because that's what we are, you know, nothing in the best sense. You know, no label adequately describes anybody. Does it? You know, you can't group people together by their gender pronoun. You can't say all oh, people with the she gender pronoun are the same, or all people of a certain age are the same, or all people from a certain nationality or all people from a certain town, or, you know, any, any label. It doesn't define us, does it? So the only way to know yourself and anyone else is to be un unidentified. Yeah. 
Mabel, um, my stepdaughter, was telling me the other day that uh, now there's a flag and a and a sort of official pronoun and so on for the unidentified, uh, which is kind of ironic. You know, <laughs> it's like I'm identified with being unidentified, <laughs> and I've even got a flag of my non-identity. It's like, hang on, hang on, what help? <laughs> So, you know, the emptiness isn't, isn't a label <laughs> either. The emptiness is derailment in, in, in its own openness. And so that's what we're using the movement for. You know, you use a thorn to remove a thorn. You use a, a samskara to remove a samskara. So you could, you know, temporarily have the unidentified label to remove all other labels, but then you'd need something to remove that as well. Yeah. And now I, I can't see this, this metaphor without seeing uh, your illustration, Ollie, of a uh, bunch of uh, gentlemen in uh, rather nice swimming shorts, actually, <laughs> the kind I would wear. <laughs> And they're all, well, one's trying to push the other into the pool. You know, one is sort of nervous about swimming. And so he conjures up another version of himself to push himself into the pool. But then that one's left on the side. So you have to conjure another one up, push that one in. But that one's left on the side. And it goes on, ad infinite. So you can't use yourself <laughs> to free yourself. <laughs> anyway, knees up. <laughs> Come up from the side. And you're ready, which is now, by the way. And take a block or two or three and sit on block or two or three. And the legs are going to go over to one side of the body. Uh, if you're here in the uh, BBC, the legs are going over towards uh, Sovereign House. My dear good friends at Sovereign House. Organized by Tara, who's in a, a rock band that I've yet to look up. I must remember, I've got to remember what they're called. I'll let you know next week, and then you can look them up too. I'm excited to watch the look at a rock band. Uh, lift and turn away from your feet. Breathe through your nose. Uh, a paragraha, which means uh, is a negation. Pari uh, means something like really. And graha means grasping. So not really grasping. So notice, are you really grasping? Now you can identify grasping by overdoing. Are you overdoing it? <laughs> so settle back. Let's just turn the pose back a bit. So untwist it a bit. Let your legs be settled. And then turn without disturbing the alignment of the torso, uh, without lifting the legs. So you have to enter into... Uh, timelessness. And then you find that a great yogin or yogini, she gets more and more from less and less. More and more from less and less. Okay, well done, return to center. Stretch out your legs. Give yourself a little energy bath. Knees, ankles, Buttocks. I'm just listing the body parts now. Tummy, chest, face, head, ears, arms. I can't stop. Shoulder blades. <laughs> everything. All the everything. And once you feel, you know, kind of baba boomy, legs over to side two. Similarly, uh, for Bharadvajasana. And then without disturbing the legs, they're settled. You lift and turn away from your feet, breathing through your nose. With this sort of priority of not, not disturbing the legs, keeping them settled, keeping them heavy. Eyes soft, breathing deep. Good, good. Yeah. That looks good. Looks really good. So the yamas, as they're called, uh, which constitute the uh, first step of the Patanjala yoga, uh, Ashtanga yoga, which is first formulated by Patanjali. Before that, we have Shadanga, Shadanga yoga, 
have six ungas instead of eight. And then we have later sort of nods to Patanjali, but some adaptations of what are in the eight. But in Patanjali's eight starts with Yama, Yama. And Yama includes a parigraha. And so the Yamas are like a compass. Where is yoga? <laughs> parigraha. And it doesn't mean that it's going with what's comfortable for us. We're comfortable with what we're familiar with, but that doesn't mean it's good. You know, smokers are comfortable with smoking, but it doesn't mean it's good. Return to center, breathe through your nose, and we're going to sit in siddhasana or another seated position that's comfortable. You can sit with the short end of the block forwards, or you can sit on a brick block. Uh, just one round of mantra uchara. <coughs> Yeah, so it can be any position that's comfortable. Mantra Ochara uh, is Mantra Ochara, uh, is Mantra Uchara. Uh, that is <clears throat> pushing uh, a mantra upwards through the central channel. So you imagine the central channel starting the pelvic floor. Uh, the mantra is Om. When it gets to the nasal area, make it as nasal as you humanly can. You push it right up through, even beyond the Dwadashanta, which is 12 finger widths. Dwadash mean, uh, means 12, Dwadasha means 12, and Anta uh, means the end of. So we're going to push that uh, Om from the pelvic floor up through the Dwadashanta via a very nasal sound. Let's take a deep breath in. Oh. Shoulders down, buttocks relaxed. We shall luxuriate next in 139 seconds, Shavasana. There's no rush, it starts from when you're all uh, laid down, from when the last person is laid down, then the 139 seconds Shavasana starts uh, then. Oh, to hell with it. Let's make it 140. 140 seconds of asana. So laying on your back when you're ready. <clears throat> and palms up. We'll make it count. Mm -hmm. very, very keen okay. and then just notice the feeling of release of your limbs, the, the arms, the legs the head, just notice what it's like to fully release the arms, legs and head to fully release Wonderful correlation between levels of settling and levels of expansion.
fully expanded experience, of course, is called Brahman. Brahman. Um, Brahman means several, several things. It comes from a root that means to swell or expand, like a seed with water on it expands and swells, becomes a seedling, becomes a baby plant, a sapling, becomes a full tree, roots and branches. Feeling into your body with a little wiggle of the toes and the fingers. And perhaps you can sense the interconnections just as trees, roots are connected to all other trees, roots via mycelium. Similarly, we're connected, our energy body is connected to all bodies throughout the universe. <clears throat> So you can feel like you're moving, sometimes called Indra's net, <laughs> a net of interdependence. Bend your legs when you're ready, place your feet onto the floor, scoot the buttocks under towards the heels, take an extra deep breath with a sigh like exhale, and follow through with a few more. Roll onto your side, facing away, from the shrine, the side of the room, with knees drawn up. Before rolling again in your own time towards Padmasambhava and the Parinirvana Buddha. And, or if you're using the Pali, the Parinibbana Buddha. And bringing yourself up nice and easy from the side. Comfortable seated position with the hands in prayer. Affirming these words, if you want to, with the word Om. And perhaps visualizing for a few seconds afterwards a sort of representative scan of all beings. May any merit that we've gained, any benefit that we've gained in our acting in this way, go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. Oh. Mm. Just give yourself a snapshot of all beings. You can visualize, you know, the odd bird or sea creature or person, happy person, sad person. Mm. Scanning. Thank you very much for coming along. Rumors. <laughs>